Now let's deal with the language of the kingdom. Now, in today's church, there's what we call religious talk, and then there's kingdom talk. They're not the same. You need to understand that. People can have a form of godliness. They can talk church. But when you've been in this for a while, you can recognize when somebody is truly spiritual or they're just talking scriptures to you or just trying to talk, quote unquote, religious talk. It's not the same. One, I mean, when a person is truly born again, things come from the heart and you can have a different sense. And I want, I want you to hear me clearly as we get ready to go into this. When you are born again, you carry a different spirit. You may not be perfect in every way, but you carry a different spirit because when you're born again, you're born of God, which means the spirit of God resides on the inside of you. And people, in spite of imperfections, can recognize the spirit that you carry. And I will tell you this, people who are not born again can recognize your spirit because there's something about you that either they don't like or makes them feel uncomfortable. You may not always recognize it, but that's one of the reasons why you know you're born again, because your spirit seals you. Your spirit, the spirit of God on the inside of you is, 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 a, is, a, is a manifestation of your salvation. In addition to everything that we've talked about as far as your ability now to be able to understand the scriptures from a, from a different meaning, because you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, and you have a desire to want to do what is right, because the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. And when you do sin, you feel convicted or feel bad because the Spirit on the inside of you will convict you. I mean, th this is all part of your salvation experience. So, we, but, but as time goes, you realize that your conversation gradually starts to change. This is important. How you're being discipled by people around you ha is very important I and mean, it has a lot to do with where, where you grow because a lot of times when people become born again, they're discipled wrong. I'm going to be honest with you, they're discipled wrong. They're discipled amongst religious protocol or they're not even discipled at all. You're told to just simply come to church and hear somebody preach. That's not the same as discipling. Discipling is, is showing you how to understand the scriptures, pointing you to the scriptures, teaching you as a babe in Christ how to walk in the things of God. Now, Jesus' method of discipling is different from much of the discipling that goes on today in the modern church. Jesus discipled them. He gave, he, he gave his disciples an opportunity to administer. He demonstrated ministry right away within the three and a half years they saw demons cast out. They saw the dead raised. There's lots of people that are in church today that have never cast out a devil, never experienced, been around. I mean, somebody who's prayed and God raised somebody from the dead, much less healing or anything along those lines of somebody get healed. And if, and if they, they have experienced it, it's been far in and in between. But Jesus' lifestyle for those three and a half years that he, that he was ministering before he was crucified was full of opportunity, miraculous happenings. He was walking on water. He was in a situation where he took, he took two fish and five loaves of bread and multiplied it. Supernatural things that the disciples was exposed to. How often are you exposed to the supernatural? So let's tie this together. We, we want to bring some things together as a new convert to help you understand that don't just settle for status quo. Be open to everything that you read in this Bible because we're in, a, we're in a time now where God really wants to manifest himself and reveal himself in a very powerful way to his children. As a born-again believer, you're part of a new kingdom. As a born-again believer, there's a language that you need to have. But with that language, you need to understand that you, gotta under, you, you have to understand this. Let me make this clear. You have to know the voice of God. Understanding God's ability to speak to you is going to be very key as a believer. That, that's another benefit. God is able to deal with you on a more personal level. Yes, God will use ministers to preach to you. Yes, God will, I mean, God will use the preaching of the word to speak to you. But beyond that, God will speak to you in a language that you understand. 
He'll speak to you through his word, but he'll also speak to you through the spirit, the spirit of God on the inside of you. And I want you to think about this as we get ready to go into this. If you live in a home with people and you go days and weeks without speaking to them, that would be considered dysfunction. Now, we've already established the fact that when you become born again, the spirit of God, he resides on the inside of you. If you go periods of time and there, there's no dialogue, that is considered dysfunction. So don't let any lukewarm individual tell you that you cannot hear from God because there's lots of denominations out there that will tell you you cannot hear from God unless it goes through them. Yes, we understand that God uses leaders. I'm going to tell you that. But the thing about it is you can hear from God too for yourself. You need to understand that. And some, somebody may be listening to me, may be thinking that I'm talking about something spooky, but it's not. Because the truth of the matter is, is that the reason why it may seem spooky to some is because they're not used to born again believers saying that I heard from the Lord. The Lord told me this to tell you. And, and that's strange to a lot of people. But, but that, that's the reason why you've never been, I mean, that's the reason why it is what it is. Because when you don't see this on a continuous basis, you might have the tendency to believe it because when I first got saved, I thought certain things was, was bordered on cult, being cultish because the church that my mother was a part of at that time, none of this was happening. None of it at all was happening. And, and they didn't even know anything about the Holy Ghost, much less hearing the voice of God. So it's possible even today, believe it or not, <laughs> it's a shame, but it is that you can deal with people that go to church every Sunday and never even heard from God. They don't even know that God can actually talk to them because they've never been told that. So let's tie this together in a nice little boat. St. John chapter 10, St. John chapter 10, we're going to start at verse number one. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. That's Satan. That's the, that's the devil. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. That's talking, <laughs> that's, that's talking about Jesus. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now Jesus is talking about the sheep, which are the born-again believers. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, from, from him, for they know not the voice of strangers, which means there are other voices that are out there. You need to be able to lock into the voice of God. And, and, and again, as time permits, and, and as you go through the course of life, if you're being pro properly discipled, you will start to know the voice of God. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. They didn't quite have the revelation of what he was saying. And, and that's another story within itself, but let's keep reading. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily I say unto you, I am the door. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear, hear them. All right, here we go again. We're talking about hearing now. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. This is what Jesus is describing of himself when we enter into him. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. That's, that, that's what Jesus came to give. He came to give you life, and that more abundantly. But we're going to tie this together. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf scattereth them, and he catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Now watch this. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. There's a lot of that that's going on in today's church. Let's be real. It is what it is. So let's keep on going. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep and I and am known of mine. In other words, Jesus knows who his born-again believers are. And they know him. 
he says they know him. So let's deal with this before we go any further. Hallelujah. Let's tie this. You can't know someone unless there's dialogue. You can two two ways you know somebody by what is said and by what is done. Because a lot of people in today's world they'll say a lot of things, but then they'll do something else. But in the case of Jesus, you'll recognize him by what he says to you and what he does in your life. Those two things. Now, let's deal with this before we go any further. When we talk to the Lord, it's not a monologue. It's not just you talking to God and hoping that he answers you by some abstract way or some or or, or, or some out of the out of the way, uh, something out of the uh, something something crazy. The Spirit of the Lord has the ability to speak to you. I want you to hear me. When we, when we read through the Bible, particularly Old Testament, the Gospels, and also the book of Acts, we see that God has spoken to his people. He sent messengers by way of angels, by way of the Spirit of God. I mean, different ways God has, 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 has administered to his people. So we deal with a supernatural God. God has the ability to administer to his people. There's lots of people today that don't know the voice of God. And sadly to say, where they go, the preacher don't know the voice of God. <laughs> so let's be real. We, we have, in order for people to get delivered, they have to understand this. All right? So this is another story. So that's why when we, when we teach and preach, we don't want to teach and preach from our intellect. We want to teach and preach from the Spirit of God because that is a way that God can speak to you. But if I come to you with, with, a, with a whole bunch of pre-planned stuff, Stuff that, that that's from my head, from, from eloquence and stuff like that, and not from the Spirit of God, there's no guarantee that that's going to bless you. You may get some knowledge per se, but if it's not from the Holy Ghost, it's going to do you absolutely positively no good in a larger scheme of things. All right? <laughs> because you because revelated teaching is designed to help catapult you into your destiny. And this is why we want to do things on the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and, and help you understand that, that just as the preacher hears from God or is supposed to be able to hear from God, you should be able to hear from God too because that keeps you from staying a babe in Christ forever. Hearing the voice of God will help you understand the scriptures that you read, help you recognize when somebody's preaching from God because everybody's preaching is not preaching from God. Just, you need to be able to recognize the voice of God when somebody else is saying something to you and also out in the street. So knowing the voice of God is, is very key. All right. Watch this. Verse 15. And as the father knoweth me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have, I have, which are not of this fold. In other words, I mean, Jesus has got sheep all over the place. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. This is powerful. They shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, let's, let's deal with this thing when we the church real quick. You have brothers and sisters in Christ that don't belong to your local congregation. Because let's break this down, because people are more, more interested in promoting their church than they are promoting the church, which is bigger, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ is bigger than one body of believers. You need to know that because, again, we, we have to understand that the body of Christ, the church, the ecclesia, is, is a body of believers that's, that, 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 that is, a, is bigger than a, than a small group of people. A lot of times people will say, well, I need to be at my church. It's okay to be faithful where you belong. But God has got people who are of God that, 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 have, that you've never seen. And I want you to be open to revelation and teaching from other venues because there's lots of people that have a hard time receiving godly word because it comes from, a, from, from, from somebody different or somebody that their preacher does not endorse. That is not of God. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. So 
a lot of times we, we cut ourselves off from people that can help us because it, it doesn't meet the approval of those that we say are in leadership. But one of, the, one of the things about the Spirit of God is you have the ability to recognize when somebody's of God and when they're not. That that is one of the basic things. You, you have to be able to recognize who your other brothers and sisters in Christ are. Because it's the Spirit of God on the inside of them that validates that. It goes beyond what they say. Like I said, you can say a lot of things, you can say a lot of religious talk, but your spirit will always tell on you. And this is powerful. So we, we went down, a, a, we went down a, a rabbit trail. We want you to understand that God wants to do something supernatural in your life. The voice of God is supernatural. God is a spirit. And when we hear God, we hear supernatural authority, supernatural word. It doesn't have to be this, this booming voice per se, uh, like a lightning flash as thus saith the Lord, I'm God. No. God will speak to you and start to train you in a language that you understand. This has been the problem. A lot of times God's trying to deal with people and people that they respect say that it's not of God. <laughs> now the scripture does say try the spirit. But we understand that. But the thing is, is that the only way you're going to try the spirit is by the spirit. <laughs> we live in a day where there's a lot of people that are not walking in the spirit, trying to hinder and stifle people who God's trying to get their attention. I mean, so the, one of the reasons why people have a hard time walking in salvation is because they don't know the voice of God. They, they, they don't recognize. Years ago, I had people try to confuse me when I, when I, when I was hearing from God. People was trying to tell me that I was not. Matter of fact, one person went as far as to say that a state of passivity came on me that the devil was taking my mind. That's because they was trying to keep me in a specific spot. Even though I was hearing from God and confirmations was coming from different sources saying that I was hearing from God, the people that I honored and respected at that time of my life because I was still technically a babe in Christ, they was telling me I lost my mind. Now, the, the, these, these situations are far more real <laughs> than, 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 than we can talk about right now. There's lots of this is, that goes on in church and in the body of Christ. So, one of our jobs, because we operate in the prophetic, is to confirm when God is dealing with you. You need to know that because hearing the voice of God, knowing the voice of God, is the key to your destiny. You need to learn how to be led by the Spirit. All right, Romans chapter 8 Verse 14. Now, we've talked about this in times past, but, let, but for those that are listening to this for the first time, I'm going to bring your attention to um, verse number 12. All right, now, let's we'll go to verse number 11, Romans 8, verse 11. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. That's, remember, we're dealing with the spirit of God now. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now remember, you have the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you. This is powerful. You're not, you, you're not just born again with, with, with nothing. The Spirit of God comes and dwells on the inside of you. Now watch this. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. In other words, you don't have to live by this natural world. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. That means if you live in your natural world, understanding I mean, if you, if, you, if you do the things that we call the flesh, it eventually leads to dying. Now, when it talks about death, I mean, it's not saying if you sin today, you're going to die immediately. It's talking about a process of dying. So that's why you want to live. That's why you want to obey. Because, again, you, you don't, you don't want to live by the law of, of death as far as things. And the enemy want to keep you in that realm. All right? The enemy wants to keep you desiring to fornicate desiring to cuss, desiring to do a whole bunch of things that will ultimately lead to spiritual death and ultimately physical death. There's another story that we can talk about, but for the sake of time, we'll leave that alone for now. All right. It says, verse 13, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, of the body, you shall live. So we're tying it together. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you are led by the spirit of God, if you are led by his voice, by his spirit, you are considered a son of God. 
Remember, as a born-again believer, you're not just a Christian. You're a son or daughter of God, which means just like in your natural family, you have the DNA of your mother and your father. When you're born of God, you have his DNA. You need to understand that because that's powerful. That means you can operate as his child in the earth. So you are now a kingdom citizen. You, you are now part of a godly family. So which means you have the ability to operate in the family of God. And, and, and since God is a spirit, you have the ability to operate in the realm of the spirit, which is supernatural. This is powerful. So you, you don't have an ordinary experience. This is supernatural. So let's tie this together in a couple of instances in scripture. Hallelujah. Where God visited his people and, and talked to them. You, you need to see this in the Bible because a lot of people don't believe that God can give them um, specific points that God can direct them, give them, and, 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 and be as real in their lives as somebody that's human in front of them. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 real quick. Acts chapter 8, and we're going to start, hallelujah, at verse number 26. Now watch this. Hallelujah. Well, watch this. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Now, this is an angel speaking as God's representative, saying, Arise and go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, the angel is giving them specific directions. Hear me, specifics. I want you to understand something that when God speaks, he has the ability to tell you specifically what to do. Everything doesn't have to be by chance when it comes to God. The, the, New, the New Testament church was birthed in the realm of the supernatural. That means the Spirit of God had direct interaction with the people who were born again. He was able to speak specifics. Now, the scriptures only give us, I mean, bits and pieces of, 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 of certain individuals. But we understand, according to the recorded word, that God was able to deal with people and give them specific directions. Now, watch this. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, or Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit, okay, yeah, that's Isaiah. Then the spirit, then the spirit said unto Philip, here we go again, verse 29, then the spirit, we're talking about the Spirit of God, said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. This is intimacy. This is God speaking to a man by way of the Spirit, by, by way of his Spirit. Now, I want you to understand something. The Spirit can direct your path. I want you to be open to that today. The Spirit of God will speak to me and because you need to hunger after the voice of God. You need to know, Lord, help me to understand your voice. Do that simple prayer. Lord, help me to understand your voice irregardless of what anybody else tells you. Hallelujah. We do not have a dysfunctional salvation. We have a salvation where we can hear the voice of God. All right. Again, God's telling him something specific. Now watch this. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I? How can I? except some man should guide me. So we see a situation where God does use men to guide people who don't have a clue what's going on. So we're tying this together. Now, again, I want you to hear me. God will use people to guide you along, but the, the use of men was never meant to hinder you. It was meant to guide you along and bring you into a deeper revelation of the scriptures and ultimately the ability where you can, where you can walk in revelation and hear God for yourself. All right. So, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a dumb lamb, a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from earth? And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speak of the prophet of this? of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him 
Jesus. <laughs> wow. And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now, the eunuch didn't have an understanding of the scripture, but he, already, he knew about baptism, water baptism, <laughs> which we know water baptism is an introduction into salvation. And we do that as a result of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He, he, knew about, he knew about water baptism. Now, watch this. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So now, God is using Philip as, as an instrument of, the deli of deliverance for the, I mean, for, for the eunuch. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they would come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Now that was like a seizing away. That was a supernatural happening. He was caught up and taken away. Now watch this. The, the, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Esotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. This is powerful. I want you to hear me. We see a supernatural visitation. He was Philip was led by the Spirit. Then after he fulfilled the mission, he was caught up in a supernatural way. You need to read this, and you need to, when, I want to encourage you to get your concordance and understand the Hebrew and the Greek. Now, the Greek, is, now, 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 the New Testament is translated in the way of the Greek, so when you get a concordance, you're going to see a, a section in your Bible that's going to give you a translation of a lot of the words, what they meant from the standpoint of the Greek. And in the Old Testament, it says, since it was primarily written in Hebrew, and since it was written in Hebrew, you, you'll get a chance to, 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 to cross-reference words and study words and see what the actual meaning was that. All right? So this is extra stuff that you need as a born-again believer because a lot of times people take stuff and they just take it out of context because they don't take the time to really research it. As a believer, we want you to be open to, 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 to all the proper revelation that you have access to. That is your responsibility, not just the preachers. It's your responsibility to learn the word of God for yourself. So let's continue in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, starting at verse number 10. Watch this. And it says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. To him and to him said the Lord in a vision. Now here, here the Lord is another supernatural encounter. Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into, into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And, he, and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now that's specific. Now remember, God can and will deal with you in specifics. You need to be open to that. God will give you specific. This was not just confined to, I mean, to, to the book of Acts thousands of years ago. Everything that's in the Bible is for our learning. We want you to know that you can hear God. God can deal with you, and God can give you specific directions. All right? It's all right. Watch this. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard many of, the, of this man, how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority for the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Now watch this. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my sake. That's a visitation. That's what God wants to do with you. I want you to hear me. I want you to believe this. God wants to deal with you in intimacy. Now I'm going to give you, if the Lord should permit, one more scripture. And we're going to start in Acts chapter 10. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10, verse 10. Let's see now. Now, let's verse number nine. It says, On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Now, that's happened to me. I've fallen into trances. And God has administered to me. That's not strange. I mean, because 
demonic people do these things, we think it's the, we think it's all demonic. No, remember everything that the, that God does, the enemy tries to duplicate. All right. So I want to throw that at you. And saw heaven, verse eleven, and saw heaven open up. Okay, Acts chapter ten, verses ten. We're going to read him at verse eleven now. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending onto him, and as it been a great sheet knit at the four corners, he shone him, shone him a vision, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. The voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not common. This was done thrice or three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And he called and asked whether Simon was surnamed Peter was lodged there. Now watch this, verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek, seek thee. I'm going to read it again. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. God has the ability to, to, to be relevant to your situation. God is a very present help in your situation. God can and will speak to you in a supernatural realm. He can deal with you. It should be commonplace. It should be normal for somebody walking. You say, well, the Lord was dealing with me about this, that, the next thing. That should be normal. That shouldn't be out of the ordinary. As a child of the kingdom, you have the ability to be led by the spirit according to Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are called the sons of God. You have the ability. I wanted to give you a few instances in Scripture to help validate my point that God can deal with you. Do not look at these men as being, being unique. Remember, everything in the Scriptures is for our learning. And if it's in the Bible, it's for you. Rule of thumb, if it's in the Bible and you're reading it, you can get something out of it. We declare this blessing over you today. We want you to walk in the supernatural power. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to all the promises of scripture, including knowing the voice of God and walking in that supernatural voice in Jesus' name. You be blessed. We pray God's blessing over you. Have an anointed time in your salvation.